Tomorrow in Happy Hour, we'll have some special coverage of Super Earnings Thursday as Google, MasterCard, Sony, Procter & Gamble, and so many others give us some idea how the last three months have played out for each company and what they expect for the immediate future. By the way, guys, tomorrow you got that Google and Sony. I'd be buying Google right now. I don't know whether it'll pop on the earnings report tomorrow or not, but I wouldn't wait for that earnings report because it very well might. I don't expect it'll be nearly as bad as, say, the Yahoo report today. Google's killing Yahoo. And Sony, by the way, especially with Blu-ray now basically in the driver's seat and having won the HD wars for the digital discs, I think Sony's a great play here. I actually, I, I'd be buying that one too. It's one of my favorite stocks for this year. As for the markets today, guys, the Fed continued its collusion with the landowners and bankers of taking money from renters and savers, and as we were just talking about with Willie, the African-American communities, and giving it to who? Well, the speculators and borrowers, of course. The market rallied big time immediately following the confirmation that the Fed would make it ever easier for debtors to pay back their money in dollars that are worth ever less. Of course, by the time the closing bell rang, word of downgrades of bond insurers hit the market hard. To talk about all of this this action is Todd Harrison from Minionville.com to do a little buzz and banter. Happy hour regular. How you doing, Todd? Right, how are you? You know, every time you're on, it's like we got the same jacket. Are you calling my assistant ahead of time or something, making sure we look twinkied? I mean, it means I have to change my wardrobe. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At any rate, man, how about those markets today? What, 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 you were, were you out there trading? Were you freaking out? It was another wild day. I was glad I wasn't trading. Uh, yeah, the trading markets, while well, Mercury is in retrograde, is never a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're being serious right now. I am being serious. I don't yeah. know if you feel it or not. But this there's an old, old adage on Wall Street that the first move is the false move after a Fed cut. Uh, it's very active out there, to Tracy's point earlier. Uh, you know, unless you got quick, quick trigger fingers and you're nimble, it's, it's probably best to watch it and digest it and, and look at it with a longer lens. All right, and so when you're actually, like, when you were doing the trading today, were you on the long side, the short side? Were you doing some intraday trading? What were you looking at? I, I was trading from the long side. We talked last week about five reasons for optimism and how there's room up to the downtrend lines, and there's still some room. Well, there's a 1,200-point move since your article got published mm -hmm. about the reason reasons for optimism. I mean, mm -hmm. nice, nice trade, by the way, on that, yeah, it's a, well, whether it's a trade or not. Right. Ego-wise, at least it's a yeah, trade. No ego. How, well, we all got the ego. We just got to fight it, right? Emotion is the enemy at yes. any rate. Any rate. What are you, I mean, so now that we're basically starting to bump up and we got a 1,200-point move, you still liking the long side, well, or do you think it's long in the tooth? It's interesting. I think the Fed is dancing on the head of a pin here, and, and you know, we, I was listening to your analogy earlier about how it's going to be binary, and I agree to that to a point, um, but we always talk about the, the path that we take to get there is more important than the destination. Uh, my rentals last week were the banks and the home builders. I'm out of those, uh, but I am long some huggies and druggies, some pharma and some consumers. Defensive, oh, some, consumers. Some, yes, some defensive oriented stocks. Uh, okay. Those haven't rallied. Whether or not that's, uh, you know, keep your, keep your sinners, sell your winners remains to be seen. All right. How about we answer a few emails, Todd? Sure. All right, cool. As always, guys, you know you can write me at Cody at FoxBusiness.com, GoGo at FoxBusiness.com. You can write Todd at Todd at Minionville.com. Let's hit some viewer emails now. Chris in Arizona has a question about a stock we've been talking about a lot on this show this week. He writes, recent discussions priming EMC's VMware seem to suggest a solid buy on the company. I think you're referring to my talk on it. And yeah, I was hyping that stock and bullying it. Dead wrong, by the way. Yet the stock slid more than 30% this week. Yes. Do you feel the tech sector is unusually volatile during this quarter? Is small bills business reeling in planned investment technology deployments. Also, the server realization realm is Microsoft. That They're releasing a whole new thing that's going to basically try and supplant VMware's entire business model. You know what, guys? What VMware basically does, it takes, if you just had one server, makes it, it doesn't matter whether you have hundreds. It makes it like you're just dealing with one. It's a really neat technology. There's going to be a big secular growth in that industry. I don't think anyone can displace VMware, but guys, as always, you got to pay attention to the stock price themselves sometimes, and with the way that market has hated this report, I'd step back. I mean, Todd, you've been I, there. I, I, yeah, I, I can't speak to the name, but, you know, beta technology shares in general had a great run into the end of the year. That's where everyone was hiding, so I think January, you're seeing an unwind of that, so that's probably exacerbating the price action a bit. All right, excellent. David in California has a question on Fidelity. He says, it is my understanding that very few money markets have ever failed, and a money market with Fidelity has never failed. What sayeth thou? Actually, he said, what say you, but... 
Oh, I, 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 well, I think any reputable bank will protect, will take the loss to protect the buck of the money market fund. I think what, what your viewers need to be aware of is the word enhanced. When you see enhanced money market funds, that means that they've got commercial paper, they got, may have CDOs. If you're going to save money, which is why you put it in a money market, you want to make sure it's backed by T-bills. Enhanced. I love that, right? I mean, essentially <laughs> what they're doing, they're not just going into some of the, the corporate paper, but they're using leverage to do anything they can to jack up those returns on what's mm -hmm. supposed to be a stage safe money market mm -hmm. investment. In other words, guys, if it says enhanced, run for the hills. Finally, Bobby from Pennsylvania asks, quote, with the aggressive Fed cuts and stimulus packages hitting our economy, what do you think the odds are that we enter an outright echo techo bubble this year and next? Todd, that's the binary outcome we're talking about. When I see that, I, with the Fed being this aggressive, but the economy and the underlying fundamentals, certainly in the banking industry and the real estate sector, so bad, they, they either reinflate a, some sort of, a, say, a tech bubble, and yeah, this market goes up, or they just don't actually help anything, and we're looking down a big crushing. That's why I like the options of buying volatility here. Right, well, Brian Reynolds said it uh, earlier in your show, it's either 1998 or, or 2001. Exactly. And, and, I, and I agree with that. I think that the odds of it being 1998 are diminishing as a function of the structural underpinnings of the market. So the debt capacity and, and, the, and the, the ability for consumers to spend that money is diminishing with the, with the debt levels as they are. So I would actually skew it probably 75, 25 the, wow. the other way. You're you know, that bearish. But, but you want to you wanna always allow for the spectrum of probability, and, and that is a, po a possibility. And as you mentioned, it's not just the destination, but exactly. it's the route getting there. So Capital. along the way, even if we are in a bear market, there the biggest uh, biggest bull rallies happen in that context anyway. Yep. Todd, as always, man, thanks Thank for you. coming here today. Tracy, how about all that? <laughs> about all that. <laughs>